Hello, my dear students. This is Mr. Shaima Gharib, and today we are going to talk about fractions, decimals, percentages, and how to change between them. First, let's start revising some rules before you watch any video. You have to sit in a quiet place. You should have your pen and a piece of paper to take notes and to solve questions. You should pause the video after each question, then you try to answer on your own. Then you play the video to check your answer and to understand the question in case you get a wrong answer. Are you ready? Let's start. Fractions, decimal percentages. From the previous videos, we learned how to change from a decimal number into a percentage and from a fraction into a percentage. So let's link the three together in this video. So the most important and famous fraction is the half. And we said before, we have one quarter as well and one fifth and let's change them. So one half, if I want to change it into a decimal number, it will be 0 0.5. If you remember from the previous videos, we said I want all of you to know by heart how to change them into decimals or percentages. So the half as a decimal number is 0 0.5 and we learned how to change it in the previous videos and as a percentage will be 50%. What about the quarter? The quarter as a decimal number is 2.0.25 or 25 hundredths. In order to change it into a percentage, we multiply it by 100 if you remember, so it will be 25%. For the one fifth, it is 0 0.2 or 0 0.20, so in order to change it into percentage, it will be 20%. If you know the half and the quarter and the fifths, you can get many other fractions using them. So let's talk about the one eighth. If you remember, we change it into 0 0.125, then into a percent as 12.5%. So these four fractions are very, very important to know by heart, as we said before. Uh, as a decimal numbers and as percentages. Now let's see the three quarters. We know that the quarter was 0 0.25 for one quarter. Then the three quarters we have, we can get it from the one quarter. What about the two fifths? We can get it from the one fifth and the three fifths as well and the four fifths as well. Now let's do them. Three quarters as a decimal number will be 0 0.75. And as a percentage will be 75%. What about the two fifths? We know that the one fifth was 0 0.2, so the two fifths will be 0 0.4, which is 40%. The three fifths, as we know from the one fifth, if the one fifth is 0 0.2, then the three fifths will be 0 0.6, which is 60%. What about the four fifths? We are going to do it the same way. It will be 0 0.8 which is 80%. So please, I want all of you to study these fractions because it will help us in all the coming uh, lessons about percentages. So you have to know the conversions between fractions and decimal and percentages for these important fractions. Again, let's continue more fractions of the 3 eighths we said before as a decimal, it's a 0 0.375 and as a percent, it's 37.5%. And the 5 fifths is 0 0.625, which is 62.5%. And the 7 eighths equals 0 0.875, which is 87.5%. Now let's talk about the 2 eighths. The 2 eighths is same as, what do you think? What fraction is it? If I simplify it, it will give me... Yes, one quarter. And one quarter is 0 0.25, which is 25%. What about the four eighths? Four eighths is same as half. It's equivalent a fraction for the half. And the half is 0 0.5, which is 50%. And what about the six eighths? If you simplify it, you will get three quarters. And the three quarters as a decimal number will be 0 0.75 as a percentage will be 75%. Is this clear? Now let's talk about this fraction, one third. 
this fraction is very special fraction because if we change it into a decimal, it will give me an endless number. So it will be 0 0.33333 forever. So in this fraction, if I have it, I can write it as 0 0.333 or 0 0.33. So when I change it into a decimal, it's called, by the way, recurring fractions because it has no end and the numbers will be repeated forever. Okay, so when I change it into a percentage, do you remember? We multiply by 100. When we change a decimal number into a percentage, we multiply it by 100. So it will be 33.3%. What about the two thirds? So if the one third equals 0 0.33333 forever, then the two thirds will be 0 0.6666 forever. So it, in order to change it into a percentage, I will multiply it by 100. So it will be 66.6%. Okay. So these two fractions are very important to know it as well by heart and to study all the fractions in this video, please. Okay, now let's go to our questions time. Arrange the following numbers in increasing order. And we said before, increasing means ascending, which means starting from the smallest. So I have some fractions and decimal and percentage the three together so what do you think which is better to change all of them into percentage or to change all of them into a decimal or to change all of them into fractions the better is to change them into percentage or into decimal let's see if i want to change them into percentage so this is 20, 13 over 20. So this 20 must be 100. How to make the 20 100? By multiplying by 5 up and down. So when you multiply the 13 by 5, it will give me 65 over 100, which is 65%. Then I have 75%. What about the 4 fifths? The 4 fifths is 80 percent what about the 0 0.7 0 0.7 is 70 percent and what about the 0 0.82 0 0.82 means 82 percent now i can change all of them or i can order all of them in increasing order the smallest one here as you can see is the 65%, which is 13 over 20. So I will write 13 over 20 first. I will cross it out. Then I will look at the next the smallest percentage, which is the 70%, as you can see here. So I will write it as 0 0.7. So I will cross it out. Then which one is the smallest? is 75%, so I will write it next, I will cross it out, then the smallest one is 4 fifths, which is 80%, so I will write the 4 fifths, and remember, we write the numbers that mentioned in the question, and the greatest one is 0 0.82 or 82%, so I will write it 0 0.82. Which numbers make the number sentence correct? I have these numbers, as you can see, 6 over 8, 39%, 3 over 6, and 0 0.5, and 0 0.35, and 70%. So we have here a number sentence, a number that is greater than 1 over 2 or half. In order to answer this question, so... I need to know the value of the one half here. I can write it as a decimal. So it's if it I want to change it into a decimal, it will be 0 0.5. Now I need to write all the numbers or which number of these numbers that is greater than 0 0.5. So what about the 6 over 8? 6 over 8 as a fraction could be 
3 over 4, which is 3 quarters, right? So 3 quarters means 0 0.75. Of course, it is greater than the half. So I will write it here. It could make this sentence correct. What about 39%? 39% is less than 50% because the half is also 50%. So it's not greater than the half. What about the 3 6? 3 6 is equal to half. So they are equal. It's not greater than half. What about the 0 0.5? The 0 0.5 is equal to half as well. So it's not greater than the half. What about the 0 0.35? 3, 0 0.35 is seen as 35%, which is smaller than the 50%, and also it's smaller than 0 0.5. We have 3 in the tenths, and here we have 5 tenths. So it is smaller, not greater. What about the 70%? Yes, the 70% is greater than half, which is the 50%. So I can write 6 over 8, or I can write 70%. Is this clear? Let's read this question together. Taya said that 30% is bigger than 1 over 3, or 1 third. Is Taya correct? Explain. So, as we said before, that 1 over 3 is very special. Fraction it is a recurring fraction that has no end, which is 0 0.333 as a decimal number. And as a percentage, it was 33.3%. And 30% is, as you can see, smaller, not bigger. So I will answer as... No, my answer will be no. And in the explanation part, as we said before, when we do this type of questions, you have to write mathematical sentence, mathematical fact, not words, okay? So I will write that 30% equals 30 over 100, which is 3 over 10, which is 0 0.3, okay? So this is the 30%. But, and as we know, that 1 over 3 is 0 0.333. So, which is bigger? Is the 30% bigger than 1 third? Is 0 0.3 bigger than 0 0.333? No. So, this is the explanation part. So you have to write the value of each in decimal or to show that you know the value of each one in decimal to compare them. Is this clear? This is the end of our lesson today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any question, please feel free to leave a comment and I will answer you as soon as possible. Please remember that your feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you very much and have a nice day.